of places that you would think to be haunted and creepy. Hospitals and nursing homes, at about 1 a.m., are the worst. Death and illness run the halls of these institutions on a daily basis. The walls become infected with it. The floors and fixtures are run down by it. Each room becomes a cell of this thing, and at times, makes it appear living. Let me tell you a story about a particular room, one that has become known as the Death Room. That room is 210. From what we know, the real disturbances of this room began after the death of a male patient. We'll call him Jerry. Jerry was well known to the nurses because of his frequent attempts to make himself vomit. He would stick his entire hand into his throat and make himself gag. Jerry even got to the point with his illness that no one would believe him when he said he was sick. Then, one particular day, he began complaining about having a bad headache. After repeatedly pestering the nurse, she finally told him to go and lay down and that she would bring some pain reliever. Jerry went into his room, cursing at the nurse the entire way down the hall. The nurse, after grabbing some pain reliever, made her way down the hall and entered his room. Screams were heard throughout the entire facility at that moment, and other nurses came running to aid. What they found was horrible. Jerry had made it to his room, but hadn't survived beyond that point. Blood seemed to be coming out of every part of Jerry. It had pooled onto the floor around him, and was spreading to thin red lines at the edges of the room. A superstition in facilities of this sort is that when somebody dies, you open the windows and allow their souls to escape. But countless tries proved that Jerry's windows wouldn't open. Weeks after removing his body and cleaning the room, Nurses still believe that Jerry was still there, and future incidents seem to prove that something was indeed in that room. Mr. Rathburn was on his second round at the facility. The first time, he had been a pleasant man. He had gone through treatment and had gone home with high hopes. This time, he had fallen down and broken his hip. He was put into room 210. The rumors were that he wasn't going to make it this time. The first night, it was said that he could be heard screaming all throughout the building. Every time a nurse would enter his room, he would sit straight up and tell them that demons were pulling him under. Another time, a nurse went into his room and he tried to speak and it looked like and sounded as if someone or thing was trying to strangle him. You could actually see the finger marks. Still, other nurses spoke of a shadow that would sneak down the hall and go into that room, and shortly after, Mr. Rathburn would start screaming. The day he passed away, they said was a dreadful one. He screamed and screamed until his voice was nothing but a whisper. They said that his eyes almost bulged right out of his head in fright. His last words were, They're coming to get me. Mr. Collins only had moments left when they moved him into room 210. His wife was in another room close to his. She spent most of her time at his side waiting for the inevitable. This particular night, however, she had gone into her room and crawled into bed to rest for a while. She had fallen asleep to be awakened by the commotion in the hallway. A nurse ran by her room in a state of panic. Mrs. Collins poked her head out into the hallway and noticed that it was in her husband's room that they were going into. She threw a robe around her and headed in that direction. One of the aides tried to caution her and keep her back, 
but she pushed her way through and into the room. There was her husband's dead body in the bed, with eyes and mouth wide in terror. All around him, on the floor, was glass from the lights overhead, but not a piece was in the bed with him. His privacy curtains were shredded from ceiling to floor, as if someone had taken a knife to them. Mrs. Collins had to be sedated that night. The memory of her husband's face haunted her until her last moments, but especially when they transferred her to room 210.